Once again, good morning and good evening to one and all. Thank you for your cooperation. Uh, we're starting off in a minute. Good morning, all. Uh, this is Narendra here. I hope my uh, voice is audible. Um, uh, I actually take care of marketing at uh, Web Solutions. Uh, I would like to thank you all for taking your time today. Uh, you know to uh, to see our webinar. Uh, it's definitely a pleasure for us. It's morning hours. I know you guys have to squeeze in a bit of time for this webinar. Again, thank you so much. Having said that, I would like to introduce our award-winning FDA Management of Change compliant expert, Mr. Chinmoy Roy. He is based out of US for about 35 years plus. He is one of the world's first to direct a team of consisting a team consisting of engineers, IT, and QA in design, implementation, and obtaining a fit for use certification for the world's largest paperless biologics manufacturing facility. He is a practicing uh, data integrity auditor. Former F FDA inspectors include him on their uh, third party and mock up audit teams. His presentation at Worldwide Conference earned him prestigious award of the Speaker of the Year by the conference attendees at leading US conference. Again, uh, Mr. Chima Roy, thank you so much for your time and it's an honor uh, to have you here in our webinar. Thank you, Narendra. And I will send it back to you. I, I presume you have a presentation of your product and when you are done, then I'll take it over. Is that? Yes, plan? yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Wonderful. So I'll return it back to you. Team, just to give you a high level view of the company itself, uh, Web Solution was initially known as uh, Wipro e peripherals. It was part of a Wipro company and it, it broke off in 2000, 2000 as an independent entity called Web Solutions Limited. It's a listed company in India. And we have multiple businesses here. One of them being uh, on the retail segment, we have retail billing solution where we manufacture uh, parts machines for uh, retail segment. We have a factory in Badi and Mysore. Um, it's an ISO certified factories. Uh, that's on the retail part. When we come on the uh, corporate segment, um, we also do manage print services where we, uh, we rent out printers uh, along with uh, security solutions, so on and so forth. We have close to around 600 plus customers over there. And uh, coming to um, digital transformation, we have a, a GST solution. GST was implemented in 2017. And uh, Web as a company has uh, acquired a license from the government called GST Suvida Provider. We provide GST solution for corporates, uh, which includes uh, GST filing, um, e-wable, e-invoice generation, so on and so forth. In addition to that, we have uh, uh, you know, a document management system product, which along with um, uh, workflow automation, local development platforms, so on and so forth, which allows us to develop our own solutions on top of the platform, which I'm going to uh, describe a little more in detail as we go forward. Uh, we are also authorized India distribution partner for Rico. Uh, so we sell as well as uh, service Rico products in India. That's a, a high-level view of our uh, products and services. So as we talk about uh, Web Digital as a company, GST and document management are our uh, primary products that we sell in the market. And then here you can see a snapshot of our customer base, primarily from the Indian market. We work with a few of the large companies from various uh, uh, regions of India. Coming to uh, the product itself, as I mentioned earlier, we have local development platform. You can build and deploy your application 50% faster. In addition to that, the product is tightly integrated with document repository. So here you can store and retrieve documents securely from a centralized uh, repository. In addition to that, uh, the platform also has a workflow automation. It's primarily an intuitive uh, designing screen where you can drag and drop and design your workflow processes. Uh, which is again tightly integrated with a local development platform and document repository. In addition to this, the platform has the ability to integrate with third party uh, applications, uh, which is primarily, uh, it could be uh, your in-house mission critical applications, or it could be your um, legacy systems. We do the integration through RESTful APIs. Uh, we have done impl imp uh, current implementation with SAP, Oracle, Microsoft Dynamics, so on and so forth. 
Now, on top of this particular platform, we have built multiple solutions. So when we talk about our platform itself, uh, the ROI of the platform is you can have multiple solutions built on the single platform. One of them being employee records management system, which actually addresses uh, certain key issues with the HR department. We have a procure to pay automation, which again addresses some key issues with the uh, uh, procurement process itself. And then we have management of change, which is what we're going to talk about a little bit today. And then we also have legal document management system as well. Uh, it could also include contract management, so on and so forth. All these is again built on the same platform, which has local development, document repository, and workflow automation. Now, moving on to the, um, I'm hoping I'm not too fast. If you do feel I'm too fast, you can uh, uh, drop in a message and, you know, I'll try to model it myself. Moving on to the next slide, um, today's topic is primarily management of change. So when we talk about management of change for any pharma and chemical industry, I'm sure Mr. Chinma is going to add a lot of value to that. But from a product perspective, what happens is when a management of change is started off, somebody requesting for a change has to submit a bunch of documents, primarily uh, requesting one, requesting for a change. They also have to justify the change and also state the current uh, state of the uh, uh, you know, requirement. And that requires a lot of documentation. And these documentation has to go through multiple approvals. And once the approval is done, there's an impact analysis. Uh, in an approval is done, it has to go through the implementation stage. Again, under the implementation stage, whatever has been implemented goes through a lot of documentation again here. So all of this has to be centrally uh, stored, as well as it has to be centrally monitored. We need to track it, so on and so forth. This is what our management of change automation does today. And that is what we're going to demo on today's demo. So moving on to the uh, next slide here, some of the key uh, points that would be a takeaway from today's demo is when we talk about management of change, the request for management as well as, well as approvals can be done remote. So the, uh, the product itself is based on Microsoft Azure Cloud. So based on access rights, you'll be able to access the uh, approvals from your own locations. And once the approval is done, what is happening on the next state? and who did what at what date and time can be tracked using the audit trail, which is inbuilt in the system itself. And the audit trail also applies for documents for anybody who viewed the document or downloaded the document from the system can also be tracked. Now, these documents are centrally stored. It's in a secured way. We use uh, AES 256-byte security system, which is, uh, which is primary to secure the documents as well as its content as well. And uh, the other additional advantage that comes along with document repositories, you will be able to search and retrieve the documents using metadata, or it could be content of the document itself, or uh, it could be the name of the document. You'll be able to retrieve those documents from the system. Now, process metrics, this is primarily related to the automation part of it. You can define the process based on the current uh, uh, approval process or uh, based on uh, the number of people who are part of the system. And the same process can be automated using our intuitive drag and drop feature to design the process, uh, workflow automation. So this is primarily the uh, doc, uh, document management system for our MOC management of change. Now, having said this, uh, I would like to just run you through a quick workflow that would be demoed on today's demonstration. To start off with, we'll have an initiator who's going to start off a, a, a MOC request and MOS request could be for various reasons. So he's going to start it off. And um, uh, the same request goes through multi-level approval. And once the multi-level approval happens, it goes to the document. Uh, you know, whatever the document has been requested has to be uploaded as part of the process. And the same thing will be approved or rejected. If it is re rejected at any state, the entire MOC gets canceled. We also have an option to provide recommendation where you know, it can go back to the previous, uh, to the initiator so that he can accommodate the uh, recommendation. Or we can also reject it as well, which will cancel the entire uh, MOC request itself. In addition, you also have an option to approve it where the process would go to the next stage. Now, all once all the documents have been uploaded during the initiation stage, the same thing will go back to the initiator where you know after the implementation of the uh, change, 
they have to upload the document which is again going through multi level approval and once the approval has been completed the moc will gets closed and the same thing will be available for you on the dashboards as well where you can track uh, the number of uh, mocs that's been created the number of mocs that's been rejected so on and so forth from various departments and locations so that's something that we'll be seeing on the demo now on the demo what i'm hoping to do is you know um, uh we will try and have about uh, the first four steps as part of the demo itself the the next part of the demo would be skipped primarily because the look and feel and the experience from the user standpoint remains the same which would ideally give you the gist of you know how the product works again thank you so much for your time uh for joining for our webinar today so there is the product uh, interface so i'm uh, logging in as uh, vishal who is the uh, initiator so when we log in as the initiator here he is a person who is going to request for uh, the uh, moc itself and um, as we log in you'll be able to see uh, two important items here one is the inbox and then we have a moc list when we talk about moc list if vishal is part of certain moc instances he will be able to see all the instances that he is part of under a list here and here you can see we have moc number the moc number is a combination of various uh, 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 you know options here one of them being the location of the uh, uh, location from where the moc request has been raised then we have the process for which it's been raised then we also have the year when it's been raised and at the at the end you have 0200 which is actually a counter that keeps changing for every moc instance that's been created so this moc number is is a combination of various options that's been added up here which can again be customized based on certain requirements as well then you have a title then you have requested by then we also have site so uh, you will we'll also capture from which location the moc has been uh, raised the date has been captured as well and one of the nice thing here is the status as you can see the status have been custom built uh, we have something called a document upload factory manager approval moc completed so on and so forth so at various stages we are capturing uh, the actual status of the moc itself with the name which gives a little more uh, comfort to the users who can see and understand where exactly uh, the moc is standing and for that you don't have to open up the moc and see it with the status you'll be able to know about that now going back to the uh, inbox itself that's uh, where you get your task uh, it's a day in and day task you'll be able to act upon it you will also get the email notification as and when a task has been assigned to you and that's again an option you don't want to be bothered by these emails you can also disable that as well having said that we have an option here to create an moc so let me click on that so when we click on the moc itself there's the electronic form where you will have to fill up the moc details here we have the issue date so it's captured today's date then you have the site you can select the site as well and this if this allows you to select single site at this point of time but if you select another one it shows up an error here as you can see but depending upon your processes and requirement this can be accommodated as well now here i'm selecting uh, the section name so currently i'm going to select the quality assurance along with quality assurance you have the sub process names the sub process name is based on the section name that you have selected so for now it's quality assurance so i'm going to select the eou quality assurance then comes the title so here you can give the title of the moc itself the moc that you're going to create so i'm just going to name it as you no know, change change required for fire tool and the proposed change is primarily an improvement and the moc category is an improvement again so here you have an option whether you can select whether it's a, a major type of change or a minor type of change for now i'll just select it as minor the present situation of the fire tool is you can provide you know your the reasons the moc requester can provide the reason here and to justify you can provide your supporting document as well it could be an image 
um, uh, it could be uh, uh, you know uh, a document so that can be uploaded here as well so proposed changes to you know new file tool i'm going to add it up and you can also provide a justification here now these fields are are, are a standard uh, you know product features which can again be modified based on uh, you know a company's process requirements and it's not necessary for each and every stage you have to provide the uh, uh, attachment here and we're also going to select whether it's a permanent change or not so i'm going to select it as no sorry it's a yes and then the number of days that it takes to implement this moc we are estimating it's going to take about 10 days you could do that and then click on create moc so as you can click on create moc you can go back here under moc list you can see an moc has been created and uh, uh, you know a new moc number has been attached to it it has captured the name and it has captured the date and time and also it's, it's captured the status as well so here when you open it up as a initiator you can also go to activity history which showcases showcases the step by step process of who has been involved in this particular moc approval process so you can see that you know it's gone to the manager of originator uh, as a next stage so i'll be logging out and logging in into the next user so as i'm logging into the next user you'll be seeing that you know uh, the user has received a task for approval here you can see this you know it's it's on the top of the list now here from the user perspective when they have received a task in their inbox you can also set up a due date on when it has to be completed the due date could be one day from the day they have received it or two days from the day they have received it beyond that there can be a notification uh, indicating that you now we are passing the due date as well so this is what the due date is all about here now when you click and open this particular task you can see that in the manager of originator can see all the details that's been filled up in the past and now it says it's a lengthy form you also have an option uh, where you, know, you can just click on editable fields you just select it it will show up the field that you need to fill up so the manager of originator has to just take a decision whether to approve it or not right so here we have approve reject and recommendation as i mentioned earlier if you select approve it moves to the next stage you select reject it actually cancels the instance of this moc itself uh, then the initiator has to restart with a new instance of the moc you also have an option called recommendation recommendation sends your recommendation back to the initiator so that he can accommodate those recommendation and submit the moc back to you so here we're not cancelling the moc instead we he is trying to accommodate few changes that has been suggested by the originator manager so for now i'm going to select it as approve you can put in as comments as well and you can click on complete the task so at this stage the manager originator has completed his task and when you click here he can also go back to the activity history and see who the uh, next person is in in this particular process in addition to this you can also go to documents here all the, just give me a minute you can go to the documents here you will be able to see all the document that's been attached in this particular process and then under activity history you can see that you know it is uh, waiting with the factory manager fm is nothing but the factory manager and is waiting for them uh, sheshu to approve it so i'll be logging out of this account and log into sheshu's account here and as we log into sheshu's account sheshu would be having a task uh, which he has to uh, start working upon and here one of the thing to notice that as you know sheshu can also see a separate form for himself an additional form here and then there's a set of questions for him to take care of is this process had so here you can set up your own set of questions that you want to be part of the process so i'll just select it as no
Customer communication is not required. Is this validation required? No. And then the factory manager can take his decision to approve, reject, or recommend. So for now, I'm just going to approve it. That's fine. So here, as we click on a, a complete task, basically what's going to happen is it's going to move on to the next stage where uh, you know the uh, the next set of approvals will be part of the approval uh, process. Now, after the factory manager approval is done, we can see that you know it's come down to the uh, quality assurance team as well. Now, quality assurance team can also go ahead with a similar kind of approval, provide their own um, uh, you know uh, inputs here. So the same thing is going to be added up here. So for now, I'm logging into as uh, Mr. Singh, who will be the uh, part of the quality assurance. When you can, as you log in, you can see there's more and more uh, forms that's going to get added up. The first initial forms is all non-editable fields, which has been raised by the initiator and there's a factor manager approval. He's put in his inputs here. Then it comes to the quality uh, assurance team here. So the quality assurance team can actually select if there if there's a requirement of another set of users or another set of departments who needs to approve this particular MOC. So I can select a particular department. I can also select any particular list of document that needs to be attached for this particular MOC to move further. So uh, this dropdown is uh, uh, we can add more in more uh, documents to the same list here. And then you also have an option where, you know, uh, the QA MR decision can be selected here as well, which is for now, I'm just going to click on approve and put in his comments as well. Now, as we uh, complete this particular uh, task here, primarily what is happening here is the, qual the quality assurance team has selected a different department here to uh, be part of the approval process and the people in that particular department becomes a part of the process here where they also have to provide their uh, approval stamp. So you can see here this earlier until now, we were looking at a sequential approval process and now at this stage, it's a parallel approval. So there's multiple people who have received the uh, task for further approval here. And, uh, and once it's been approved, it will further go to the initiator where he can upload all the necessary document that's been uh, requested by. And the MOC process will continue until the MOC has been implemented and the implementation document has to be submitted again, which further gets into uh, the similar kind of approval. And once it's been approved, the MOC gets registered. So this is what the process goes on. For now, I will be breaking up with the demo because further the demo is, is with a similar kind of screens. And the look and feel remains the same, but it's just a process that will continue. But for now, I hope, you know, um, I've shown you the gist of the product, which includes the process automation. It includes, uh, you know, tracking of the uh, MOC itself. Uh, it includes, uh, you know, the centralized storage of documents. It includes audit trails, so on and so forth. So having said this, um, you know, we will, uh, you know, we are... Uh, you can put down your questions or queries that you have. We will take up those queries as we go further in the demo at the, um, at the end of the session of, uh, as we go forward. Um, for now, I will be passing on the stage to uh, Mr. Chinmoy, who will be adding up more about MOC, management of change from his side. Uh, also, Mr. Naren, uh, before Mr. Chinmoy Roy takes over, I would like to uh, launch a poll, that's okay. Sure, sure, sure Siddharth, yeah. So uh, I am launching a poll. I hope all of you are seeing this on your screen. We'll be leaving this on for the next one, one and a half minutes. Do you have an MOC solution in place? Uh, Mr. Chinmay, um, I've stopped sharing. Um, you can uh, go ahead and share your screen if you have anything. Yes, I'll do that. But the polling is on. So as soon as the polling ends, then I will start and take it over. Sure. Thank you. Okay.
I'll just wait for a cue from you folks that it's over. Let's you, then I'll start. I'll be ending the poll. Thank you all for your inputs. Yes, Mr. Chinma, you can take it forward from here. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, very good morning to all of you. And uh, as uh, Narendra said, that uh, it's we should thank you for taking the time for coming to listen to us. And uh, I will try to roll in to my presentation, the presentation that was made about the product, but I'll also address several other things. Okay, so let's start. Let me, you know, thanks to the technology, I'll try to share my screen, which will be this one. Okay, and I will start from here. So change management and control, let me go to, how do I, why does it say setup? Okay. From beginning, okay, I got it, thank you. Yeah. So I'll be talking about change management and control. As you can see, I'm using two of the terms, management and control. But I have about 30 slides. And again, uh, please monitor. If somebody says, slow down a bit, I'll be very glad to do so. And you know, to give a presentation like this without knowing the background and the experience background of the audience is somewhat challenging. But I'll try my best and you can slow it down somewhat. What's the principal purpose of an audit? We all know what an audit is. You know, people have internal audits. Auditors come from outside. Uh, then you have third party audits. And so, but fundamentally, what does an audit try to look at? And what an audit tries to look at is how much in control are you of your operations? Do you understand what you're doing? Do you understand what you are doing, why you're doing it? right? What are the controlled things you have in place? Are all of you employees just running around, not knowing what the right hand and the left hand is doing? That's what an auditor is trying to see. And some of you may be very well versed in some of the modern thinking and the trends of US FDA auditors. They are now trying to determine how much you know what you do here? Are, do you, are your people properly trained? Are they asking the right questions? That is very important because that gives a cue into the knowledge of the people that work in an organization. So that is the principal purpose of an audit. Whether it's a data integrity audit, whether it's an audit where they're looking at your validation or your changes. But the fundamental, the key is, do you know what you're doing? Are you in control of what you're doing? Whether it is a change, whether it is change control, change management, development of software, releasing a product, do you know what you're doing? Okay. Besides that, they also want to know the sequence of events because that's how you can recreate. Somebody took a drug and had an adverse impact. Okay. And it comes back. Oh, there is an adverse impact. The, the, the person just broke out after taking the medication. The person just broke out into an allergy. There was a rash. And so you have to investigate that. How do you do it? You have to be able to go back in time. That's why you're doing your change control and change management. Can you recreate this course, you know, events? Who authorized the change? What was the change? What were the implications? How did you test the impact of the change? There are a lot of questions being asked. And that is why you have to prepare yourself to make sure when you release the product that you have a good control of everything that took place to make that product. It's very important. Change, I'll bring out the difference, but I'll use the two words together. Change management and change control. So, 
you know, change is one of the core activities of the pharma industry, right? One of the core, you know, all of us know validation is one of the core activities. You know, you have to convince yourself that the systems, the processes, the equipment, the science, everything that you are using is as per what you intended to do. You intended, for example, you intended to buy a car to go at 80 miles an hour, but you went and bought a car that can maximum go at 60. So it is okay, you can buy that car of 60, but you have to do an analysis and record it as to, well, you wanted to buy an 80 miles per hour maximum car, you bought a 60 mile, but it serves your needs. And the auditors would want to know who did the uh, impact assessment, who did the acceptance, right? When was it done? What is the background of that person? Well, sir, he's a music director. Oh, no. He can't make that decision to accept it. He knows about music. He doesn't know. He's a subject matter expert. Okay, so all that has to be kept. And it is one of the core activities of the pharma industry is validation as well as change management and change control. So why change management? And the change management is there in our guidance documents and regulations all over the place. If you are a, a company that manufactures drugs or injectables or tablets or uh, devices, medical devices, they are all over the place. That is how important change is and the management and the control of that change. So ICHQ-10, it requires you to have continual improvement. It's not enough to say, hey, this is validated, don't touch it. No, no, no. You have to continually improve your process. New technologies coming up, okay? Database technologies, queries. Yes, there are companies that still do paper-based, but in this competing world, if you remain paper-based and don't switch to the technologies that are available, to quicken your production, to be more sure of the drugs that you are making is what you want it to be. You have to continually keep improvement. I know there are some people that say the continuous improvement of the candle resulted in the electric bulb. So you can't be frozen in time and say, don't touch anything. So when you are doing the continual improvement, what are you doing? You are changing right? That's continual improvement. You need to do it. It's required by regulations. And when you do it, what are you doing? You're moving from one state to the next state. And that process in itself is the change. And they are saying you have to be in control of your change. So the, the question is, don't try to fight the change. Don't try to avoid the change but manage the change, okay? It is needed, manage the change. Many companies in the past I've seen, don't touch anything, don't change anything, we validate it. We need to maintain the validated state. Things have changed now, different. Change is a natural phenomenon, right? You and I both keep blinking once every 15 seconds. What is a blink? It's a change. Your eyelids are where at one spot, Next moment is the next spot. The sun, the moon, it's changing. One day it is setting at this time and then the next day it's, it's always nat natural. Don't fight nature, control your change. Manage your change. Two things. Okay, so 211.68, it's right there. Let me see if I can push this away. No, I can't, okay. I don't know how to, yeah, this sitting, okay, I'll take it down. So validation, so 211.68, continual improvement. You have to maintain the validated state. All these, if you see some, they are telling you, yeah, you have to validate, but you have to maintain the validated state. So you may be sitting and asking yourself, geez, what sort of a guidance is this? And then you want me to change. Yes, you revalidate. Maintaining the validated state. So all these things you have to understand. That's why you need to have change management.
Let's move on to the next. What is change management? It is a set of processes, right? You had a presentation of the product and it is a set of processes in place from initiation of a request for change, analyzing the impact the product showed you, approving and rejecting, it showed you too. I've got a flow chart right there, you know, two, three slides later. Implementing and evaluating the result of the change of the implementation of that change. So you can reject that change upfront. We'll talk about the reasons. Or after implementing the change, you just don't walk away and say, you have to test it. You have to implement the result. Yes, this was the intended change and it is brought in the intended effect. Okay, so it involves steps to include people, processes and technology aspects. When these th three things come together, complexity comes in. Okay, so if you have a manual process, that is an interaction of the process and people. When you have an automated process, that is an interaction of the process and technology, automation, software. So you see the three things acting together is what constitutes change management. You need some people, that's why you don't have pilotless aircrafts, passenger planes. The pilot is there, it is automated, but you need human inter intervention at certain times. The optimum level of interaction of humans to remove the error aspect, but we'll, we'll be keeping that. So that is the reason. So this is a typical flow chart, you know, taken from the ISPE guides. There are four uh, uh, main steps here. Forget the CRB, you know, developer, developer workflow, change control, but there is an initiator of a change, change requester, and then there is a, and, and the product has all that. WEP, WEP's product has, I mean, he kept talking, but now I'm trying to summarize with the flow chart. It has all the aspects right here. And this is taken from an ISPE industry guide. It, it's not related to any product like they, saying, oh, this product does this flowchart. No, this is the general flowchart and the WEP product, you know, agrees with everything here. All those stages are there. And the important thing is, as, you know, Narendra was saying, is the audit trail. They want, they meaning the auditors want to know, hey, who did what when? Oh, it was approved. Okay, who approved the ACR? Here, this, this section. So you see, this is the flowchart. And I will share it with WEP and you people can interact if you want the flow chart. Uh, the, I mean, just contact them and interact with them. They have a product also, but this is all everything that is there. You have to implement, you can, you can reject it right here. Okay, assess CCR, assess each stakeholder assesses, approve. After that, this starts the implementation. If it is not approved, it gets thrown back. Back meaning, you know, it is put in cold storage. Now, when I, in my working days in the corporate world, one of the main reasons for uh, uh, rejecting it, okay, you want to change, why? Oh, this is the thing, you know, we, this is the reason. Okay, if we didn't, if we didn't approve this change, we meaning the VP or somebody, because he's the money person, right? He or she. So says, hey, wait a second. If we don't implement this, are we violating any regulations? Will we be given a 483 or a warning letter? No, ma'am, we wouldn't, okay? Then why do you want? Well, we'll increase our throughput. It's a business benefit we have. Oh, okay. Do you want to do it right now? Because we have a big load of product to manufacture. There's a demand out in the market. We are falling behind in our production. Is it important to do it right now? Well, okay, we will. So at that moment, you reject the change. It's all through a change number and everything. Everything is being tracked. And you tell the change initiator, come back in three months, we'll see the situation. Now you have to approve it in spite of all challenges. If not implementing that change puts you in a compliance risk. And then you say, oh, oh okay, let's even go and get a bank loan if we don't have the money but we have to implement this change. Otherwise with the new regulations, we have to follow. 
So this is change, okay? A deliberate, where you can reject, a, it's, a, it's a deliberate action, it's a deliberate process, as opposed to something going wrong in a plant, which is a process failure, a deviation. Okay, so there is Victoria coming in. You know Victoria. Okay, so this, this is very important that this be the flow chart. Okay. And, and you know, Narendra explained all this. And if you see the product, WEP, oh, yeah, it, it you know, follows the flow chart here. Okay, what is change control? It is a response. Proactive and reactive. Change control is mostly reactive. Something has happened. Now you have to fix that and you do it in a very controlled fashion. Subset of change management responds to an unexpected system behavior event, necessitating a change via a formal process. That, that is also now, will you use? Yeah, you can use that too, if you have to. Some people, you know, and some consider it as a subsystem of configuration management. Both are okay, but the key thing is, you have to use a tool to track that change, control that change. That's why I've been using it together, change management and change control, because it, you're still tracking what you're changing. So is a set of processes right here to initiate a request for change and change control is a formal process. I just put it together in one slide. So please understand that and you'll be able to grasp a lot more. Now, why change control? It's right here. I'm now on the next set of a few slides will show you that no matter whom you're talking to, if you're talking to an auditor who has come from the CDRH, which is the equipment uh, side, they say, oh yeah, we also got our regulations that tell you you have to manage. This is the 211 and 211 regulation, 21 CFR part 211.68B. Appropriate control shall be exercised over computer to assure that changes in master production record and control. So, you know, I put dot, dot, dot. It's, it's a regulation. A lot of things go after that too. But the key thing I want to, wanted to capture is that word changes, that you have to assure that changes are only by authorized personnel. That's why it's very important. Who made this change? Oh, some film director or cricketer. No, he's not authorized. So that's right there in the regulation. Okay, they can cite you. Here is 820 for devices, medical devices, 820.40b. You can read it. And But the things I highlighted, changes to documents shall be reviewed and approved by, okay, then each manufacturer shall maintain records of changes to documents. Now, documents is in the paper world. Now, you may be thinking, well, in the paper world, they are called documents, but the, the, there is an equivalent term they use in the electronic world, which is they call it electronic records. So, you know, 2820, these were written in the 1990s when automation or ele electronization of data was not that common, but now it is very common. So, this is 820.40b. Then same, 820 again, when changes or process deviations, here you go, unexpected event, process deviation. Change is a deliberate thing. Yeah, you want to make this change. So when changes or process deviations occur, the manufacturer shall review and evaluate the process. And that is what the WEP product does. And these activities shall be documented. So the WEP just follows this. People have to look at that and you have to evaluate and it all this needs to be documented. Now, documented does not mean on paper. Audit trail in electronic format, that's a, that's a documentation. Capturing it, obtaining and recording it on permanent media is documentation. Then it is right here, you know, quality, quality systems guidance to industry. Effective change control activities is picked right from that guidance of September 2006. So I'm trying to show you from all angles that please treat change control and change management very, 
very closely. I've not yet jumped into the data integrity aspects and I will, I don't have a slide, but I'll give you a short thing. But it gives the assurance that the data you're showing me, I can trust it. That is what data integrity is all about. Trustability of data that you present to agencies like the FDA, MHRA, because they would want to know, hey, you're giving me this data and saying, trust me, sir. No, show me why I should trust this data. Well, we, when something changes, this is how we do the change. It can be tracked down to the person making the change and when and how and all that. Because there was a regulation. Another one, Q10, okay, correct? Kappa system, change management system. It's right there in the guidance, Q10 pharmaceutical quality, PQ, PQMS. So I've just lifted it right off, you know, this verbiage, right from that guidance. You can go and look at it and you can see all that. Pro process performance and product quality, corrective action, change management system, management review. These are the four pillars of a pharmaceutical quality management system, PQMS, that management review of process performance, you need to have a change management system. It is a requirement right there in the, in the guidance. So you have a WEP system, which is fully automated, electronic with audit trail. Auditor will immediately say, geez, I can trust all this. There is no human uh, you know, involvement of a human factor of making mistakes or even cheating. People always think data integrity is cheating and lying. No, humans make mistakes. Even the best, 20 years working on the same job, one day suddenly, you know, it's a human element. They make mistakes for whatever reason. Tiredness, uh, dist uh, you know, uh, distraction. So, but you have a automated WEP type systems meeting the fundamental requirement of Q10, change management system. These are the four fundamental areas that Q10 addresses. These are the things you need to have. So I thought of this slide and clinical investigations, the integrity of the data and the integrity of the protocols when making changes. So they are telling you, finally, all changes to the system should be documented. You just can't say, geez, I controlled it. Okay, show me the documentation. Who signed it? Who approved it? When was the change made? What was the last value? What is the new value? So show me all that. Then I will believe in your data, the integrity. So everything, you know, the data integrity, everything surrounds around change. Of course, validation too. That's one of our core, core activities. But after it's validated, then you have to make changes. Show me how you did all that. Benefits of change control, okay, the validated state, continuous improvement, repair, things break down, in, which is, you know, a deviation occurs, unexpected, uh, uh, you know, behavior. Then what do you do? And in brief, they are the enablers of life cycle management in a controlled environment. That's why we have change control and change management. Now, change control means describe the change. We have done that, right? I mean, he has shown you all that. I'm going to quickly go through this. I have 30 slides and just about how many minutes? Not much. So assessment of the impact of the change, their importance or criticality and decision whether to include them or not. Reject it or accept it. It's right there in the regulations. I mean, this is what it is. And it has two main goals, supporting change so as to maintain validated state and enable traceability, who did what when. I've been uh, uh, harping on this from the first slide onwards. And the CAPA process, now CAPA, right? Corrective and preventive action. Where do you think that a company gets a CAPA? Hey, this, you know, something needs to be addressed very well, not well documented. You people don't understand the process. This event is occurring over and over again. You think you fixed it and it shows up somewhere else. So you have to show them through a CAPA process. And when they respond to a CAPA, you know, you, you, you attend. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Could you please repeat what you said? I'm sorry. This is my 
Okay. Uh, so, uh, in the in the CAPA process, they give you a 483 and you fix it. You think you fix it and you responded. So, we fixed it within two months or eight months or whatever. Then they send you a warning letter. Why? That's more serious, right? A warning letter is more serious than a 483. And you're sitting and wondering, geez, you know, I just addressed it. We all thought it was all taken care of. But now we are given, we are slapped with a severe uh, thing that you didn't. So what they have not done is the PA process, corrective action and preventive. Preventive is you go around in your plant or in your operations and look at where all a similar thing can occur. And, and what actions have you taken if it should occur? Or have you, have you taken the same action as the corrective action? Corrective action is an incident that an auditor picked up on and gave you a citation. Go fix it. But you are required to do the PA part also. And you will see in the CAPA process is the same flowchart that I showed you, the process, evaluate it, do it. And, you know, accordingly it goes. So the purpose of the corrective action is to collect information, analyze, identify. There you go. This is picked up right, right from the regulation. So where are we not saying what we have been saying over and over again? and uh, that the WP, WEP product presentation started with. It's all over the place here. Same thing, nothing different. Okay, identify and take appropriate and effective corrective and our preventive action. There you go. Now, this is the CAPA process. Go to 820.100, these seven steps. Analyze operations, concessions, definition, anything whether you're doing risk assessment, whether you're doing change request, you have to first define the problem. That's step one. Then investigation cause of non-conformities non relate, relating to product process and the quality system. So why did this occur? Corrective action, right? Why we are going to correct something? Why did it occur? You understand that. And the same thing in change management, okay? If we do this change, what things can go wrong or what we need to take care of, that's step two. Typically a subject matter expert would be involved in that. You make sure you have a SME look at it, not just pure quality. And a good quality department will throw it back to the SME department, which is engineering and other places, look at it. Then identifying the actions needed to correct and prevent recurrence of Okay, verifying and validating the corrective and preventive action. So between steps three and four, you go and implement it, and then you verify that it is fixing all those things, which is through testing and you know collecting samples, taking it to the lab. That's the process side, right? I mean, did we get the right product? Implementing and recording changes in methods, ensuring that the information and the last is submitting the relevant information on identified quality problems. These are the seven steps of the CAPA, and it spells out 820.100. Now, CAPA is an incident, right? An incident has taken place. So all these seven steps, you're sitting and thinking, geez, he's talking about change control here. So what has it got to do with change management? If you look at the change management process, it's a similar project, uh, similar process. Only step one is deliberate. You know what you want, but you don't know what is going to happen in between when you start to implement the change. And those are the steps two, three, seven. So you will see, you know, change management and CAPA, these five, uh, six steps, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, are very similar. Okay, so that's the CAPA. So in, in uh, uh, you know, so embracing change is a necessary evil. You have to make the change. And I call it evil because many people say, ah, you're, you're trying to upset our process. We have been manufacturing it well and everything was happening. And now you want to make a change. And that is why the acceptance rejection comes. We got so much of work to do. Can you defer it by three months, by a quarter? And what will be the impact? 
So that is why keep things frozen to maintain system. That is one school of thought or embrace change for continuous improvement. That's the second school of thought. And right now the regulatory agencies want the second one, embrace change and keep moving. And they are making things easier for us by giving us risk assessment. Okay, the change that you make, do a risk assessment. Well, if you do a risk assessment and you see it's a minor change does not impact uh, patient safety and product quality and data integrity, no need to do so much a uh, heavy level of documentation. We can get by with doing the minimum documentation. But that's a topic for uh, a discussion for some other uh, you know, presentation called CSA, Computer Software Assurance. So, but you have to embrace the change for continuous improvement. The IT part of the change management is often neglected. And you know, you go to so many people neglect this, the IT department, and the IT department also is very happy. They keep doing their own things, but the critical part of any operation in any company is the IT department because we are getting more and more electronic. So you have to. So this is the change management you have to adopt. Start with your IT department and see that they have a good procedure to make changes to their software upgrades, updates, right? They look at that. They meaning the auditors, they come and see, okay, show me your SOP for upgrades and updates of software, incremental fixes. What do you do? I'm, I'm going to get into cloud very soon. Uh, last another five or six slides and cloud is very important because WEP is also a cloud product. So cloud is becoming very, very uh, uh, you know, coming into extensive use, at least here in the US and you know, even in India, it, they, it has started to come into extensive use. I used to go to India once a year at least, but last year because of the COVID, I don't. So I'm very aware, I work with large companies there, you know, Redis and Cipla, and they are getting into the cloud very heavy, Sun Pharma. So we'll do some cloud, but just let's address the change. So, a well-designed IT change management system. So IT department, okay? This is not the manufacturing department, but IT. So, and actually there's a big debate going on. I, I have at least two of my clients that I consulted with, they really switched. And right at the CEO level, they expanded the IT department vastly. And, uh, you know, they... They, they put IT department in charge of data integrity. Two companies, not one, because they realized, I told them that data integrity has to, quality has to be there, but quality provides the oversight only. How to achieve it, what to do when an incident occurs, that is the subject matter expert department. You can't rule them out saying they don't understand quality, so we'll kick them out. We don't want them. Let them go sit in the closet and write code. No, you have to pull them out and see they have a good change management system. So install changes with less downtime and disruption. That's the other reason. When IT goes down, everybody says, hurry, hurry, hurry. And it is the hurry syndrome that causes disruption in change management and change control. People lose touch. People start doing things without keeping any record. Provides management why change is needed. That's what you have to do. That's what I did with them. With right up to the CEO level, it went up and they say, oh, now we realize, okay, let's, let's bring in some more people in the IT department. Problems caused if change not implemented, involve the stakeholders. So please focus on the IT department on change management to begin with. So software changes occur. There are three reasons to correct bugs. Of course, we all know, ah, we tested it and something happened, okay? To adapt software to, uh, to changes in an operating environment, Microsoft is constantly, it's one of the large software companies, they are even providing upgrades to their product, their operating system. So that's, and sometimes to enhance the software. Oh, we got a new feature today in the software. Okay, that's why you need change management to keep that. And to demonstrate operational control, training records, and all that. Okay, so that's why you need it in the IT department. Software, okay, so same thing. 
it's just not software changes, but when you do a change, there should be an SOP for change management. Change management, change control. That's the first uh, uh, bullet item. You know, don't just, any, any place you do something, you need to have an SOP. Do what you say, say what you do. So say what you do, that's your SOP. And do what you say, because you said you're going to do this SOP operation. That's the easiest sh shortcut to 483. You don't even need auditors to be trained. They will read your SOP. They will say, show me that you did it. And then you show them a, a process that you did for a particular document and you're not following your SOP. That's it. That's a straight 483, the easiest path to give you a 483. So say what you do, have an SOP and do what you say. So important to review the change and fully understand the impact of the change. That's what uh, you know, Narendra said in his presentation. Understand the step two, subject matter expert. Understand, review the change and fully understand the impact of the change. You know, I attended now, that gentleman has now retired. I forget his name. He was an Egyptian gentleman who actually did, uh, who chaired the committee on uh, you know, uh, design, uh, ICH, uh, I forget the name, 8, Q8. And uh, uh, that was a design thing, I think. Anyway, quality by design, QBD. He's the QBD expert. I attended a talk of his and he said he went in, he wouldn't name the company, but we figured out during the presentation, which is a very, very, very large company worldwide. Everybody knows the company and they have markets. And the VP of quality was sitting right next to him during the presentation and was looking at that person and said, correct me if I'm wrong. And he was telling us that he pulled out a change change request. That's what he did. Okay, he's, he's a PhD, very knowledgeable and, and can actually walk his way through. Uh, a research type thing, you know, dig into things very fast. So he said, I said, bring it. And he looked at the first section description. That, that was the guy calling for a change. He said, you know, my English may be poor, but I understand. And, you know, a very heavy Egyptian accent is very famous. I forget his name now. So he said, I looked at it. I couldn't read it. And then he said, then I called the guy who wrote it. It was two months ago. And he's saying the guy sat there for five minutes. He himself didn't understand what change he was requesting. Okay. Then I called the subject matter expert, section two guy. He says, oh, so you wrote all these things. You recommended this, right? You, it was okay with you. You did all the impact. And he said, yes, sir. Okay. Do you understand what you recommended? He's saying, yeah. Okay. Do you understand what the request was? He read it. He read it. And he gave an interpretation. And then he told the guy, okay, now you go into that room. He called the first one who wrote the change. Come on in now. You tell me what you mean over here. Not what you wrote, but what you mean. And he said something very different. See, this is how auditors get in there. And they really, this is how they cite the 483. So he's saying the guy, number one, who actually defined the change. And he, he said totally different than what he wrote. And then the number two subject matter expert who actually recommended his understanding of number one was totally different than what the number one told me what he wanted. You see the confusion there. They were not communicating. And added to that was their power of expression was very bad. And they were all assuming things and, you know, oh, he's, he means this, he means that. Absolutely not. And then he looks at the VP of quality. Am I? Then we knew <laughs> which company because we knew where the VP was from. And then, you know, that person says, must you do this, Dr. So-and-so, <laughs> in front of the whole crowd here? And the whole hall burst out laughing. He says, well, I'm not accusing you. There is a reason you are where you are as a VP, but this is what is happening in every company. And he challenged everybody sitting in the room. Tell me it does not happen. <laughs> and everybody was quiet. So that's very important, talking to each other, especially step one to step two. Okay, and then of course you do the implementation, you do the approval, disapproval and all that. 
Configuration management. That's very easy, right? You know what a configuration is. Those of you who know about category of software of ISPE, it's category four. And you really have to do a good version control. Recorded somewhere during the IQ, you look at all the configuration of your memory, how what's the size of your memory, what's your CPU ID, and you need to do that management. You change something, you go in. Even if you replace a terminal that has busted with a new terminal, its serial number is different than you recorded for the old terminal. So you, you have to understand, and, and if it is a validated terminal, computer terminal, that's where you have to make that change in revalidation. Precisely defines a computer system at any point during its life cycle. Correct. That's what I just told you. Oh, this, this uh, monitor, it had this serial number, maybe the same brand, same make, you know, Toshiba or whatever. And it is closely related to change management and should be defined in an SOP. Okay, consists of the following identification, control, accounting, evaluation. So that's updates and upgrades. I'm going to quickly go through this. You know, fixes features not working. Oh, you call somebody say, hey, what's wrong with your software? It has got a bug. Okay, I'm sending you a patch. That's an update. I'm sending you a patch, load it, see if it works. I think we fixed it. We worked on our bench here. And you get a patch, that's an update. Addresses security, enhancement, extending a battery life, small and free. I'm sending it to you. Get to work right now. I'm sorry we gave you a software with a bug or something. Here it is. Sometimes, you know, the rightmost version number, we, we're not getting in, in the interest of time. And then the upgrades are official releases that releases come for upgrade. Okay, this is the next version. And that is, so the leftmost number, it usually upgrades jumps from one point whatever to two point whatever. Okay, uh, 2.1 or 2.0, correct. That's the, that's the first bump into the next, that's an upgrade. So that's how you would know slight difference between updates and upgrades. Okay, that, that's for now, I'll just keep it there and uh, we'll proceed. <coughs> Steps for updates and so determine if upgrade. So when you get a, a letter, you know, even from cloud companies, hey, we are coming up with a new upgrade of software, a good company would send you also a release note. These are the areas and for people using our software in this manner, you need to install the upgrade. The others, well, you make an assessment. So that's step number one. Get the release note, determine if you really need it. And ascertain what the upgrade does. That's in the release note. Involve stakeholders, of course. I mean, you have to get all the people who use the software to give in their inputs. Review existing infrastructure. Maybe for the upgrade, you need to bump up your memory. Maybe so many things, but you have to make sure Yes, we don't need to change any hardware. It will work according to the release note. Develop a pro project plan to implement change. You announce to the company, hey, we're going to take the system down for one hour and this is what we are going to do and blah, blah, whatever. So the people on the manufacturing floor, people in the maintenance shop, they know the computer is coming down. They're gonna put in an upgrade. All under control, okay, good communication, Good, so people are doing their backups because you're going to pull it down. And that's what the auditor will try to see. And then you have a package to show all that. Okay, and then you validated the upgraded if needed, whatever. And then there's a deployment plan. The deployment plan said, okay, we'll send out a broadcast note that we're taking the system down on Sunday at 10 o'clock at night because, you know, whatever the reason, it's not so much in use at that time. And so that's very difficult. Uh, notify stakeholders, train stakeholders on the upgrade. Now, if needed, perform the upgrade and review with stakeholders. That's the, that's number 11 is very important. Stakeholders come in at eight and everybody starts working, things are working. Uh, it's good to hold a meeting after a day or two day. How, how did the upgrade come along? Because some of them will be calling your service desk. Hey, something is wrong here and your service desk is helping them. 
So it's good to get all, everybody together, step number 11, and do a review. Change management in the cloud. Now, let me, in the interest of time, in the cloud, you know, there are only about two, three slides left. And again, you know, I will share these slides with uh, Narendra and WEP. You can always, all of you attendees, contact them and, and you can get them, okay? So deploy validated software. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll talk about, so all this, all this cloud change management, people really make, people really do not understand fully some of the implications of the cloud. The cloud manufacturers, I use it in a plural term, the cloud manufacturers always bring in changes to their operating system at least once a quarter. And they send out release notes and everything is in place. The onus is on you as the user, even if you are using a software package that resides in the cloud, the onus is on you to review it, to understand the impact to your application because you are the best positioned as a user that understands how you use the whole cloud infrastructure. CSP, cloud service provider, okay? Then the cloud application provider, CAP, that's the SaaS. WEP is a cloud application provider. They, are, they have written their application, but it is being hosted either on the Amazon, either on Microsoft. There are so many cloud service providers, okay? So understand all that, understand the service level agreement because cloud is an outsourced business process. You are outsourcing many things to your people. So what is the contract you have with the outsourcers? It's like building a house. Okay, he's a plumber. So you outsource all the piping and water stuff to that person. Oh, this guy is an interior decor decorator. So you have a separate service level agreement. So all those SLAs have to be understood. What is it you're outsourcing? What are your expectations from them? What are their expectations of us? You know, they also, their success depends on how we support them. And then of course, you have to do the IQ, OQ, PQ. Folks, the last few minutes that I'll talk in, I'm, I'm in the middle of doing a project right now, right now, as I speak. Tomorrow, today I was talking to them, yesterday I was. So what has happened in this project? And this is what people don't quite understand about the cloud. They did the OQ, the cloud company or the SaaS, the person who has written the software. They have done the OQ in their system whenever they have done it. They have given you all the OQ results. Here, this is our OQ. The new software guidance says you can leverage those. You don't have to repeat them at your site when you install the system. Now, what is the industry doing? They are bringing that, they load it on their computers and they're repeating those tests as is. And they're filling in paperwork. So the new guidance says, no, you should leverage them. You should look at what they have done and you don't have to repeat it. And guess what they were doing? And everybody, not just the, the client I'm working with, guess what everybody what, who is doing? They are taking those OQ tests, repeating it at site and calling it PQ. And the whole thing is, we, I really had to throw out the whole PQ. No, this is not PQ. When you install it on your system, you have to check the communication with the cloud service provider. There is the active service directory, and I'm sure WEP, if they have, they will help you. Active service directory. You have to test that link. You have to test backup and recovery because your data is being stored in, in, the, in the cloud space. So if you have to do a recovery, then you know you, you need to do a recovery. The cloud service provider will do the recovery for you, but who has tested it? They can't test it in, during their OQ because they do a general OQ. They don't do it for client to client. The client has to do his PQ. And that is what you will test in PQ. Backup and recovery, uh, access control, because many a times uh, the access to the software package depends on the 
security of your company, your employees who are in your register. When an employee leaves, you update that register. So you have to test that. Hey, our employee has left. This guy taken it out. Does it work now? Can he get in? No, he can't. That's the link you have to test. And people are not doing it in the industry. And I've been to two, three places and some places they got very nervous and, you know, a lot of things happened there. But please understand that is the IQ, that is the OQ and the PQ. You have to do the cloud PQ. And you look at the bullet here on this page that is up here, periodically run regression or recovery tests. That is the key, change management, regression testing. Same test that you ran before the upgrade is that same test running and passing after the upgrade. If it is, then the upgrade has no impact. So that's the regression testing, right? So in cloud space, in cloud packages, you keep track of the regression tests. Don't throw it away. You can repeat it after they bring in an upgrade to their system. So I will end it here in the interest of time. Here I got regression testing. It's mostly most of these slides are repeats, but looking at it from a different, different angle. And then the multiple environment. I'll just, uh, this is getting into, it's nothing much in the change environment, but this is getting into computer systems validation, triple environment. So in conclusion, some updates critical because of security risks. Some updates are useful. They enhance user experience. Some may create problems such as affecting other software packages. So you have to rely on that too. Some updates may require the use of all previous updates considered as not required. So you, you, you have to look at the updates and upgrades and that's all in the change management packages. Okay, that you would be getting from WEP and others. So I'll uh, stop it here. I know I did, no, oh, 11.01, okay. So I'll just leave it here and uh, turn it over. Thank you, Mr. Timber. Thank you so much. Uh, it has been extremely valuable for us and I hope uh, it is the same with the rest of us. Once again, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Timber. Welcome, anytime. And uh, we'll, we'll coordinate about me sending you these slides. Absolutely, we can do that. Then I'll yes. leave it to you at your discretion. Your, you can, you know, I see so many participants here, 40 to 45, let them get a hold of you and feel free to share it with them and even give it to them. But uh, I have some horror stories in India too, but uh, <laughs> let's just use it for, the, for your benefit. I'm, I'm talking about the participants here. Definitely. Sir. We your are company good. implement it, work with WEP, improve your operations, and let's all be champions. Okay. Lovely, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. So as we end this session, I would like to launch one last poll and I'll take exactly one minute of your time. All right. So I hope all of you are seeing this on your screen. We'd like to know how did you find the session? Also, we'll be reaching out to each and every one of you over the next few days. Uh, so if there's anything uh, specific, any personal queries, anything there is, we can take it up on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Yeah, I'm also available. If you take anything and you can email me, I will Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. No, no problem. All right. I will be ending the poll. Thank you so much for your inputs. Once again, Mr. Chinmoy, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and the rest of them, have a wonderful day and good night to the rest of them. Thank you.